This is Mission Control Houston at T-minus nine minutes and holding. Flight controllers belonging to the Ascent team have been on console since 8 o'clock this morning monitoring Atlantis' systems in preparation for its launch to deliver the European Columbus Science Lab to the International Space Station. The Ascent team is led by Flight Director Norm Knight, with the help of astronaut Jim Dutton, who is the spacecraft communicator, or CAPCOM, today. Dutton will be talking directly to the crew during Atlantis' eight-and-a-half-minute ride to orbit. He's joined on console by astronaut Terry Virts, who is monitoring weather conditions at the Kennedy Space Center, and who is in direct contact with Chief Astronaut Steve Lindsay, flying the shuttle training aircraft around the vicinity of the shuttle landing strip at the Cape, assessing clouds, potential showers to the west-southwest, and crosswinds at the shuttle landing facility. Lindsay is assessing that weather in the event Atlantis has to perform a return to launch site abort. At the time of Atlantis's launch, the International Space Station will be orbiting to the southwest of Perth, Australia. Atlantis's launch timed out to match the moment when the Earth's rotation carries launch pad 39A into the corridor or plane of the station's orbit. Down the hall from the shuttle flight control room, another team of flight controllers is on duty in the International Space Station flight control room, led by flight director Annette Hasbrook, as they watch over the activities of the Expedition 16 crew. Commander Peggy Whitson and flight engineer Yuri Malenchenko are in their 121st day in space since their launch October 10th in a Soyuz rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. They arrived on the station October 12th to begin their half year on the complex. Flight engineer Dan Tawney was delivered to the station on the last shuttle flight in October. Today is his 107th day in space, his 105th day on the complex. About four and a half hours ago, a Russian Progress resupply ship docked to the pier's docking compartment, delivering two and a half tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the station crew, setting the stage for Atlantis' launch. Shuttle flight controllers here in Houston are watching those weather conditions at the overseas abort sites in Spain and France, which would be used in the event of an engine failure early in Atlantis' climb to orbit. Zaragoza, Spain is considered the prime transoceanic abort site today for Atlantis and its crew. At launch, Atlantis will be sent aloft on the collective power of its three liquid fuel main engines and its twin solid rocket boosters combining for seven million pounds of thrust. About 30 seconds into the flight following the roll maneuver, the computers will throttle the main engines down to 72% of rated performance, designed to lessen the aerodynamic forces on the shuttle's fuel tank and the orbiter's aero surfaces. Those engines will throttle back up to 104% of capability about 40 seconds later. Shortly after solid rocket booster separation, the orbital maneuvering system engines will ignite for two minutes, providing an assist for the shuttle as it heads uphill. Less than six minutes into the flight, the onboard computers will command the shuttle's main engines to swivel, allowing Atlantis to roll to a heads-up position above its fuel tank during ascent. That maneuver allows Atlantis to gain more favorable communications with the tracking and data relay satellite system. About eight and a half minutes after launch, the main engines will be commanded to shut off and the shuttle will separate from the fuel tank. Atlantis will settle into an elliptical orbit about 140 statute miles above the Earth at its apogee, which will be refined to a higher elliptical orbit above the Earth about 45 minutes into the flight through a firing of the orbital maneuvering system engines. Additional rendezvous maneuvers will be executed over the course of the next two days, bringing Atlantis to a docking with the International Space Station on Saturday. Seconds after discarding the fuel tank, Commander Steve Frick will maneuver Atlantis so that video and digital cameras in the shuttle's umbilical well can capture imagery of the tank as it falls away. Also at that time, mission specialist Leland Melvin will be operating a video camera and Hans Schlegel will be operating a digital still camera to capture handheld imagery of the fuel tank for downlink and analysis by imagery teams here in Mission Control. The seven crew members will go to work shortly after the shuttle's payload bay doors are open, activating systems, unstowing gear, and preparing for their first eight-hour sleep period in orbit, which will begin just before 8 p.m. Central Time tonight. A footnote, seven years ago today, Atlantis launched on the STS-98 mission to deliver the last science lab to the station, the U.S. Destiny Laboratory. It is hoped history repeats itself today with the launch of Columbus. Again, the Ascent team and flight director Norm Knight set to take over control of the 29th flight of Atlantis and the 121st mission in shuttle program history at solid rocket booster ignition. At T-minus nine minutes in holding, this is Mission Control Houston.